Welcome to Hearthstone, what's next? Hello, hello, and welcome to the Hearthstone What's Next panel. I'm Liv Breeden, and I will be your evil host this evening as we go on a journey and recount and revel in the victories that the League of Evil has achieved thus far. We kicked off the year with Rise of Shadows. Five of Azeroth's most notorious villains banded together to form the League of Evil. We descended upon the city of Dalaran, the city of Archmages, and we took it from them like candy from a baby. Khadgar lives up to his reputation and loses the city almost immediately. <laughs> Rejoice, evil friends and lackeys alike, for we had completed the first step in our master plan. With our newly acquired flying city, we went to the Sands of Uldum to enact the second step in our master plan, where we unleashed the ancient plagues upon the world. Hey, what's up? Hey, sorry I'm late. What did I miss? Uh, so I was just reminding everyone how awesome the League of Evil is, and I had just gotten to the best part where we unleashed the ancient plagues upon the world! Yeah, yeah, uh, we took care of that. What? Yeah. Like, like the ancient plagues? Yeah, yeah, it was super fun. Like, we got the old band back together. Uh, we went on these awesome quests. Finley made a bunch of mummies. That was weird. And, uh, yeah, and, you know, we went down into the tombs, we sent your Plague Lords pack, and, and uh, we already had a lot of practice beating Rafam, so, you know, easy peasy. But did you really think that was our master plan? Yeah. Why? Well, it wasn't! We have much bigger plans! We got what we wanted in Old Doom, and we got away. You mean you ran away? We totally kicked your butts. The Plague Lord of Undeath is ours to command, and we cannot be stopped. If we just stopped you, we'll stop you again. It's impossible. We're too powerful. Look, roll just the watch. Tape. Roll the tape. Descent of Dragons is the epic conclusion in the Year of the Dragon. Good and evil will clash in the skies above Dragon Blight. So, uh, what's this evil plan of yours anyways? Not that I care, because we're going to beat you no matter what. The Plague Lord of Undeath is ours, and we are going to use it to resurrect the most powerful dragon that has ever lived, that nobody has ever heard of. It's Galakrond. Progenitor of the dragon race, the first of his kind, whose incredible might was only stopped by the combined efforts of the five dragon aspects. I feel like he was stopped by choking on a rock, but I don't mean to interrupt your evil tirade. This time so. will be different. This time he has allies. This time he has evil. So what is Galakron for Hearthstone? Well, it's a brand new hero card, and there's one for each League of Evil class. 
We skipped ahead, but that's okay. <laughs> Galakrond takes on different attributes and properties of the class that is resurrecting him. So here we see Galakrond the Unspeakable, Priest Galakrond. So for seven mana, you destroy one random enemy minion, which is, you know, not that great to start with. But he's been dead for 12,000 years. Give him a break. He's got to be powered up. He needs to be made stronger. And that's where we come in. You see, by playing cards that use invoke, like cultists, or performing rituals, we can make him stronger. After playing two invoke cards, his battle cry doubles in strength, and he becomes Galakrond the Apocalypse. And he gets to destroy two random enemy minions. Galakrond can upgrade whether he's in your hand or your deck, so you feel free to play your cultists as you can. And if you thought the Apocalypse was bad, if you invoke two more times, the battle cry doubles in effect again, and he becomes Galakrond Azeroth's end. And at his full ultimate strength, you also get to equip a 5-2 weapon to crush those who stand before you. So what is his hero power? For priest, it's add a random priest minion to your hand. So this is what it is for regardless of what level he's at, but it is a very important part of the invoking process. You see, as we feed power and energy into Galakrond, he returns our loyal servitude with a gift. No, didn't he eat all of his loyal servants last time? I feel like that's what was feeding him. Spoilers for anyone who was thinking of joining the evil team. Whether it be as a snack or devoted maniac, all will serve Galakrond in time. Uh, Liv, is that, a, is that a snack with uh, one C or two? Uh, two. <laughs> oh, okay, nice. I like these rituals. Go on. <laughs> so, what is this dark gift? Well, you see, as you invoke... Galakrond will do whatever his hero power is for your class. So for Priest, it adds a random Priest minion to your hand whenever you invoke. Taking a look at Devoted Maniac now, <laughs> four mana, two, two, neutral minion with Rush and Battlecry invoke Galakrond. So not only does this card make your Galakrond stronger, but depending on which class you're playing in, you get an additional bonus. So for Priest, you get to add a random Priest minion to your hand. If you're playing in Rogue, like we saw earlier in opening ceremonies, you add a lackey to your hand. And if you're playing in Warlock, you get to summon imps. This makes each Galakron deck play a little bit differently. But let's take a look at another ritual that priests can perform. Time Rip. The infinite dragonflight has aligned themselves with the priests. And as such, they are going to rip your enemies out of time and space and feed that energy into Galakron. So, for five mana, you get to destroy a minion, and you also get to add a random minion, or add a random priest minion to your hand, which is pretty awesome. But there's more than just cultists and rituals. There's also Galakron's lieutenants, who are here to make sure his resurrection goes as smoothly as planned. Let's take a look at Fate Weaver now. Fate Weaver is a four mana, three six priest dragon. It says, Battle Cry, if you've invoked twice, Reduce the cost of cards in your hand by one. So if your Galakrond has reached at least the apocalypse level, you've been adding cards to your hand through the invoking process, why not reduce the cost of all of them by one? When we were designing Galakrond, we wanted to keep three major things in mind. First, we wanted to make sure you got power along the way. One of the problems we see a lot with cards that you build up over the course of the whole game is there's huge variance in whether you draw them or not, which is usually the difference between winning and losing. So by providing power every time you invoke, you get meaningful gameplay moment to moment, which is great. We also wanted to deliver on the fantasy of being the most powerful dragon that has ever lived. Uh, so some of our early iterations on Galakrond had him as a minion. And you'd build him up over the course of the whole game, and then you would slam down this behemoth of a minion, and your opponent would be openly weeping. Uh, but then it turns out those are tears of joy because they just polymorph your Galakrond and all your hard work is gone. Uh, and that's not fun. So we wanted to make sure you got to play out the rest of the game as the most powerful dragon that has ever lived. And finally, we wanted to make sure that Galakrond was different in every single class. So if you're playing it in Priest, it's more controlly because you're adding cards to your hand. If you're doing Lackeys, it's going to be shenanigans based. And with Warlock, it's going to be much more aggressive. But that's not all. We wanted to make sure that everyone could experience Galakrond right from the start. So we're giving Galakrond away for free when you log in for uh, Descent of Dragons. But not just one, 
all five Galacrons will be yours. So behold the gifts that the League of Evil can provide and bask in the glory that is Galatron. Right, give me that. <sighs> all right, evil people. So, I mean, sure. That sounds really scary, but we're the good guys. We've triumphed over evil before, and we'll do it again. It's not gonna happen. It's gonna happen. We just need a plan and some side quests. Now, the League of Evil is busy mucking around with all of these forbidden ancient rituals and their big dead dragon. It's coming back. In the meantime, we're going to be using side quests to actually get some things done. We're going to upset their rituals. We're going to rally the dragon flights to our cause. We're going to take to the skies and take back Dalaran by loading a bunch of leper gnomes into a slingshot and firing them into the city. Toxic reinforcements is a one mana hunter side quest. Use your hunter power three times and you're rewarded with three leper gnomes. Now, that's like six ways to go face. It's the hunter dream. There's nothing that could possibly go wrong here. <laughs> so that's, that's one of the side quests. But I mentioned recruiting some dragons. And to do that, we're going to need to learn Draconic. Learn Draconic is a one mana mage side quest. Spend eight mana on spells, and you're rewarded with a 6-6 six, six dragon. Now, most mages are always spending a bunch of mana on spells anyways, so this is really just a free dragon. And we're not, uh, we're not completely sure that Reno knows how to read in any language, so it's so really a great opportunity all around. Now, unlike the legendary quests that we've done in the past, we wanted these to be very flexible and they, so that they could fit in a bunch of different decks, decks instead of being more of a build-around card. So you can include multiple copies, and they don't start in your opening hand. They also play to these very core parts of each of the classes that you're in, so that regardless of when you draw them over the course of the game, you have a good chance of completing them and getting all of those nice little bonuses that they'll give you along the way. I mean, I'm not super worried about a bunch of irradiated gnomes and illiterate scoundrels. I mean, did you see how big Galakron was? Uh, yeah, very big. Very dead. He's coming back. See, you, you keep saying he's coming back, but our dragons are already here. It's like, uh, it's like the old saying goes, you know? Catch more dragons with honey than ancient evil rituals. Now, this sweet little Azure Explorer is a four mana, two, three mage dragon. He's got spell damage plus two, and he's got this battle cry that'll discover another dragon for you. Now, these explorers are the emissaries between the League of Explorers and the dragon flights that we'll be working with. So all of them come with this battle cry that discovers another dragon for you. It's just what any good recruiter does. And they've also got this extra bonus. So they're powerful, they're helpful, they're adorable. Are they all adorable? Yes. Primordial Explorer is a 3-mana, 2-3 hunter dragon. Again, she's got that Discover a Dragon battle cry, and she's poisonous, which is really handy for removing that pesky taunt that's between you and your opponent's face. I, uh, I kind of question your judgment on what things are cute, but continue. <laughs> you're, you're evil. You don't need to get to judge what's cute. Oh. You're cute. Leave them alone. So... The Dragon Explorers are designed to help with consistency in the good guy's dragon decks. Because in those decks, you obviously want to be playing a lot of dragons, but you also want to be holding dragons in your hand so that you can take advantage of all of those tribal bonuses. So that's where their battle cry comes in. And each of them has this extra bonus, spell damage, poisonous, etc., that's more tailored to their specific class, and so that you can get, like, an extra bonus from that as well. So... That's a pretty decent number of dragons. But we've got even more dragons on the way. We've got legendary dragons. We've got the biggest... Not even remotely. Nicest... Sure. Coolest dragons in all of Azeroth. 
We saw Isera unleashed during the opening ceremony. She's a nine mana, 412 druid dragon, and with her battle cry, she's going to shuffle seven dream portals into your deck. And each of those portals will summon a random dragon for you when it's drawn. But if Isera and the entire might of the Emerald Dream isn't enough for you, we've also got the aspect of magic himself, Malagos. Malagos Aspect of Magic is a 5 mana 2-8 mage dragon. And if you're holding a dragon when you play him, he'll let you discover one of the mage cards that you know and love. But this is the Aspect of Magic we're talking about, so of course he's going to juice those spells up for you a little bit. Some of these spells are more powerful. Well, Malagos's Fireball still costs 4, but now it's going to deal 8 damage. Malagos's Intellect still costs three, but now you get to draw four cards with it. And some of them are cheaper. Malagos's Polymorph now costs one, because I guess the aspect of magic decided to spend a lot of time practicing turning things into sheep. I don't know. It's his business. Leave him alone. You're not the only one with dragon aspects. Not only do we have the most powerful dragon that has ever lived, Galakrond, uh, we also have the most powerful dragon aspect that has ever lived. You know him, you love him, he caused a cataclysm. It's Deathwing. He's an eight mana 12 12. Oh, that's awesome. He's got battle cry attack, all other minions. So he's not only a board clear, but he also has a 12 attack minion that your opponent has to deal with after the fact, provided he doesn't kill himself. <laughs> Your dragons seem to have a real knack for being either dead or insane. Like, I like the consistency, but... It's a small price to pay for power absolute. But it is not up to me to decide how this chapter ends. It is up to you, the players, who choose who succeeds in this final epic conclusion. And it is up to you, the audience today, to decide which legendary dragon we reveal next. The league with the loudest supporters will get an additional card revealed. So, League of Evil, if there is <laughs> darkness in your hearts, and you would blot out the sun on wings of destruction as the world burned beneath you, then let me hear you roar! <laughs> yes. Now, League of Explorers, let me hear your cries of terror and futility as we crush you beneath our boots. <laughs> this is embarrassing. I've Every got time some... the good guys win, it's not, it's not even fair. I mean, you, you said you were going to feed all your guys to a dragon. I'm just saying. disappointed, really. All right, we're all right. Gonna... Yeah, let's see it. Let's see the good guys. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> That's right. No! <laughs> this is cheating. You're cheating. Uh, they didn't deserve it. All right, it's Wax the Dread. Sorry. <laughs> it's a five mana, seven, five rogue dragon that we're going to roll with. It's a death rattle. Shuffle a candle into your deck that resummons Wax the Dread when drawn. Rogues are great at shuffling stuff into their deck, and uh, Togwaggle couldn't find any dragons that would befriend him, so he made his own. Yeah, so you cheated and you had to make your own friend. That's yeah. cool, Liv. That's really cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> we've seen a lot of dragons so far. We've seen some awesome world-saving dragons. We've seen some dragons that are super dead, super crazy. But they are coming back and powerful. Super made of wax, which... I wasn't expecting, but it's not very scary. Not gonna lie. But let's take a look at some synergies for those dragons. The Dragon Breaths are a new set of cards that every class gets. These are all spells that have a base effect plus an extra bonus if you are holding a dragon when you play them. Sand Breath is a one mana paladin spell. No matter what, it's going to give a minion plus one, plus two. But if you're holding a dragon when you play it, that minion will get divine shield as well. Wait, you guys eat sand? No wonder you guys don't have a plan. We've, 
We've been going over our plan for like 10 minutes. Have you not been? But it doesn't have three steps. This is not a master plan. This is like baby's first plan. Look, Liv, our plan only needs two steps. One, save the world. Two, look good doing it. And if you're wondering, we're already halfway done. I got nothing, let's move on. It's wax, or candle breath, it's not wax breath. It's close. Uh, so it's a six mana rogue spell that draws three cards, and because we got to see wax a dread earlier, uh, it costs three less if you're holding a dragon. So if you're doing that shuffling shenanigans with wax a dread, and you're doing the dragon deck for rogue, why not draw them out real cheap? Uh, yeah. So when designing, uh, when designing uh, <laughs> the Dragon Breaths, we wanted to make sure that every Dragon deck pushed in a little bit of a different direction. That way you kind of know what to do with your Dragon deck in each class. So Paladin is a little bit more mid-range focused, and they can do more trading with the, the Divine Shield. That's a hard one. Uh, and then r Rogues are great at shuffling in and doing those sorts of shenanigans. So that's what they're good at. You know, I, uh, I feel like you'd have a lot easier time with these Breaths if you had your own Dragon Explorers. Just uh, we don't need Man. consistency when we are this powerful. Disagree, but, you know, I'm apparently an illiterate scoundrel, so True. Let, the Rude. <laughs> let the audience decide. Now, <laughs> I'm kind of wondering at that point, too. <laughs> so, uh, since we are the good guys, and since we unlike some people, always play fair. Take advantage of their sympathy, please. <laughs> God, Liv. League of Evil, if you would like to cheer first, the floor is yours. Oh. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Took a right. while, but... <laughs> Fine, they got there, you know, they're getting there. They're like Alacron, they get there. <laughs> and League of Explorers, let's do... <laughs> We did it! <laughs> we did it! <laughs> Corrosive Breath is a two-mana hunter spell. No matter what, it's gonna deal three damage to a minion, but if you're holding a dragon when you play it, it's gonna deal three damage to the enemy hero as well. We talked about how hunters love going face. Turns out their dragons do too. So we've shown you a bunch of awesome new cards today. The Scent of Dragons goes live on December 10th, and you can pre-order it today. Keep your eyes peeled because we're going to have more spoilers and teasers coming up in, in this upcoming month. Uh, but we've got so much more to talk about. We've got something that I'm really excited about. This is a, a brand new game mode for Hearthstone, which is super, super awesome. But to talk more about it in depth, I'd like to introduce Mike Donay and Connor Koo to the stage. Hey. <laughs> Thank you, Liv and Hadija. Dragons are awesome. Thank you, guy in the crowd who appreciates my flannel. Uh, today, I finally get to tell you about the new game mode that we've been working on for the last six months. It has been super fun to work on. Uh, my name is Mike Donay. This is Connor Koo, two of the designers that worked on this new game mode. Uh, boom. The new game mode is Battlegrounds. Yeah, Battlegrounds is our brand new Hearthstone game mode. It's an eight-player game mode. It's a free-for-all, and it's inspired by games in the auto-battler genre. But it's using the Hearthstone cards that you know and love. Now, it's been a while since we've added a new game mode to Hearthstone. So you might be wondering, like, where is it? Well, we've added a new button to the box. <laughs> it's called Modes. In Modes, you'll see the arena and our new game mode, Battlegrounds. Once you're in, you're in the lobby screen here. In the lobby, you'll be able to see your rating. We have a matchmaking system. Uh, so you're paired against opponents of equal skill. We also keep track of your wins, your top four. Uh, your rating goes up if you make the top four, the eight, down if you're in the bottom four. Pretty standard rating system. You'll see that more in practice as you play. Now let's have Connor go through the gameplay. All right, so we're in a game here. So at the start of the game, you get to pick from a selection of heroes. 
There's 24 heroes in Battlegrounds. Each of them have their own unique hero powers. So at the beginning, you get to pick from a selection of them. Everyone gets a unique one. So here you can see, you can sort of look at what their hero powers are. We're going to pick Maleficent Mana Storm here. Her hero power is Tinker, and it, it gives all the mechs in Bob's Tavern plus one plus one. That means that every mech we purchase is going to be a little bit stronger, so we're going to have like an advantage going into mechs. So we've picked our hero, and we're waiting for everyone else, and you can see the seven other opponents here. They all just fell into our brand new scoreboard that's on the left. Hey, my favorite so we're here in the first phase of the game, started? it's the recruit phase. And in the recruit phase, we're going to buy minions, and we're going to build out our warband. So here you can see that there's three minions on Bob's side of the board. Now one of them's a mech, and it's buffed by our hero power, so we're probably going to buy that one. So now we're going to put it in play, and once the turn timer ends, we're going to go into the second phase, which is the combat phase, where we'll be matched up against another player in the game. You can see who our next opponent is on the scoreboard here, and it's Queen Wagtoggle. Once we're in the combat phase, the minions are going to attack automatically, and you'll just get to watch Don't the combat play the out. Others. I'm rooting for you. All right, so you can see our minions are fighting, and it looks like we're going to win combat, so we get to do a little bit of face damage here. And that's sort of how the game goes. It sort of goes between the recruit and the combat phase until there's only one player left standing. So we're back in the recruit phase here, and we've got a new set of minions that we can pick from. But we don't really like these ones, so we might just upgrade our tavern. So you can see we just hit that button in the top left next to Bob, and our tavern tier increased. So now we're at tavern tier two. Your tavern tier represents the strength of the minions that will appear in Bob's tavern. So next turn, we're hopefully going to see some stronger minions. So we're going back into combat. It looks like we're fighting the You're Great Akazantar. It looks like he didn't upgrade his tavern. He just bought another minion. So he's a little stronger than us. But you know we're investing in the future. So we're going to come back and get him. All right. Hopefully we'll find that some stronger minions. Really out there. So we've got two mechs in the shop here. We've got a Micro Machine and a Nightmare Amalgam. Micro Machine's a really interesting minion in this game because the buffs that you acquire during the recruit phase are permanent. So Micro Machine will increase its attack every single turn. And if you've noticed, our minions always return after combat, just as they were, with the buffs that they had. So Micro Machine's just going to keep growing. So we just refreshed the shop a couple times, and we found another Micro Machine. So we're going to freeze it and buy it next turn. I think you can win this thing. So we're back in the combat. We're against Queen Wagtoggle again. They're a bit stronger this time. But we got a really good buy next round. So we've got our micro machine back, and we're going to pick that up. And it's really awesome because now we've got two micro machines. If we find a third micro machine, they're going to combine. They're, it's going to become a golden micro machine. And the stats are going to double. And the power of the minion is going to double. So that means micro machine is going to be getting two attack every turn instead of one. In addition, we're also going to get a reward for playing that where we get to discover a minion from a higher tavern tier. So getting those triples are, are really important in this game. We've got a super awesome start to a great mech warband here. So that was just a sample of the Keep gameplay. The momentum, Hopefully you get an idea of how it plays out. If you want to play a full game yourself, we have 200 machines. If you're here at BlizzCon, you can play the demo on the floor. Check it out. It's really fun. You can go and play it again as many times as you want. It's the full game. Um, let me tell you now a little bit about how we got around to making this mode. First of all, the Hearthstone team, we play a lot of games. And about six months ago in March, you would see about half the people in the uh, Hearthstone team would play Hearthstone on the lunchtime, and about half were playing this other game called Auto Chess. And we were thinking, wow, what if we could make like a combination like chocolate and peanut butter, put the two games together, and make some game that's even better than the two parts? And that's when we started making this game. 
Yeah, so it just happened that I had been working on a tavern brawl, actually, that was inspired by auto chess. And you know, when, when we set out to make the game mode, we, we really wanted to take some of the exciting elements that we loved about auto battlers, like automatic combat, and combine it with the things that we know and love about Hearthstone. So that means you're still having great, awesome, exciting stories, and you're still thinking about, how do I combine weird cards and abilities to sort of like create these super powerful warbands? And we think, after all this work we've done, we've come out with this great experience that's it's a new experience for people who play Hearthstone and a new experience for people who play Auto Battlers. It was really different. We had to make uh, a lot of changes to the engineering. Hearthstone was originally designed to be two players. Uh, in fact, it was one player and one opponent. So the engineers had to rebuild it to be eight players all in one game at the same time. People like Martin. <laughs> Hi. And when they did so, they had repercussions on uh, other, mo other parts of the game, and they had to rebuild those to support eight players also. So it was a ton of work, and our engineers uh, went above and beyond making this game mode uh, in such a short time. Yeah, in addition to making eight player tech work, they've also added a whole bunch of different features, a bunch of different ways of interacting with Hearthstone that you get to experience in Battlegrounds. So let's look at some of those right now. All right. So in Battlegrounds, we've got two different phases, the recruit phase and the combat phase, and they're using two different boards. We're actually transitioning between the two boards. So in the recruit phase, we're in the tavern board, and we're joined by our old friend, Bartender Bob. Now, one of the most awesome things that we've got on the tavern board is the ability to pick up and move your minions around and rearrange them. And that's why the minions are highlighted blue. You can pick up the minions on Bob's side of the board and drag them to your hero to purchase them. You can also pick up your own minions to rearrange them, to get ready for combat, and you can send them back to Bob and get a gold back and buy something else. We've also got a bunch of new buttons on the board, and they're on Bob's side of the board, actually. So you can see in the top right, there's a freeze button, so you can freeze it like you saw in the video in case there's a minion you want to buy, but you don't have enough gold this round. Or you can press the button next to that to refresh, look for more minions, just sort of cycle through minions, and look for the minions you really want, try to find those triples. To the left of Bob, you can see your tavern tier. We're at tavern tier two in this picture, and the button next to it, it will upgrade your tavern. There's six total taverns, and each tavern tier costs a little more than the last one. The higher the tavern tier you are, the more powerful the minions you'll see in Bob's tavern. So we'll show you some really powerful minions later that you haven't seen yet. Once your timer ends, you go straight into the combat phase, and we're using the combat board there. Combat board is also a new board, painted by one of our artists, Jerry. And when he drew this crown that you can see in the bottom corner, um, he put the purple jewel on. We really liked that crown. And we decided to make it an icon for the game. We ended up using it throughout, uh, throughout the game in different parts. In fact, on the scoreboard uh, on the side, you can see the crown above the Lich King. He's in the first place right now. That scoreboard there is sorted by um, who's winning. And the top players currently got the most health, which means they're in first place. Let me show you a little bit more about the scoreboard. Uh, so the scoreboard has uh, all eight of the players in the game. It shows their current health. And you can mouse over them to see a little bit more information. So you can see their hero power. You can see what hero they're playing. You can see what tavern tier they have, how much they've upgraded Bob's tavern. You can see how many triples they've earned this game and what kind of win streak they're on. Uh, and at some point in the future, after some feedback from beta testers, we decided we want to add how many minions of each type they have in their lineup. So we've also got another new feature in Battlegrounds. We've got a, some social features. It's an eight-player game, so we've got to add some social features, right? So we're adding these visual emotes. So in Battlegrounds, when you right-click your hero, you're going to see these new visual emotes that our awesome artists made. And everyone's favorite emote is Wavy Murloc. Wavy Murloc's great. I really like the thumbs up gnome. If your opponents, you just beat your opponent down, you want to like make them feel a little better, send them the thumbs up gnome. <laughs> Another social feature that we added is the ability to play with a friend. 
You open up your friends list, click on their name, and you can invite them to play a game of Battlegrounds with you. The two of you will queue up together. It will not be cooperative. You still get to smash them. <laughs> but they will be in the same eight-player game, and you can have shared stories that way. Another thing I wanted to tell you about is some bonuses that we added. So in addition to, just to remind you, the game comes out uh, next week. It's free to play. But you can, get, you can have some bonuses if you own some card packs from the most recent expansion. Uh, in this case, Descent of Dragons will be the most recent expansion. If you have 10 card packs from Descent of Dragons, you will unlock one, the first bonus, which is uh, extra stats that will be available to you. Let me show you a quick example of that. You can see like the heroes you played the most, the heroes you win with the most, and some other stats that might be interesting for you. If you own 20 card packs from the most recent expansion, um, you'll be able to choose from three heroes each game instead of choosing from two heroes each game. That choice means if you see one you don't really uh, want to play or you just played them last game, it'll give you more options. And the third bonus is the visual emotes that you guys just saw. Uh, so you can get these card packs by spending gold. Uh, you might have a bunch of gold saved up from the last expansion by card packs. If you pre-purchase, you'll get the card packs. Uh, or you can just play without the bonuses if you don't want to. All right. So like I said in the video, we've got 24 heroes in Battlegrounds. And they each have their own new, unique hero powers. So they all sort of change your experience. Uh, this is Jaraxxus. His hero power is Blood Fury. And it gives, a it gives your demons plus one, plus one. So this is really powerful if you have a demon warband, because you, you get to buff your demons every single turn. So if you've got seven demons, you're giving all your demons plus one, plus one every single turn, and your demons just keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Another new hero we have is George the Fallen. George the Fallen is a paladin that you all know and love. He's got some tough times. He's got a bandage on his head now. Um, his hero powers give a minion divine shield. So this is particularly good in Battlegrounds because buffs that you earn during the recruit phase are permanent. So you get the Divine Shield, it stays on for the rest of the game unless you sell that minion. Um, buffs that happen during combat are temporary because your Warband is always reset to the start at the end of combat. They all come back to life with their original stats. Um, but this is a really good ability, but it's pretty expensive. It costs you four gold coins to activate. So we've also got 10 brand new minions that we've designed just for Battlegrounds. This is one of our favorite minions. It's Soul Juggler. It's a tavern tier three minion. And it has, whenever a friendly demon dies, deal three damage to a random enemy minion. So this is really powerful in demon warbands, especially with cards like Voidlord. So Voidlord is a taunt demon that has death rattle summon three one three demons with taunt. And taunt works just like it does in regular Hearthstone. Minions have to attack minions with taunt first. So that means when Voidlord is in front of your Soul Juggler, it's going to protect your Soul Juggler. And when it dies, your Soul Juggler is going to blast something. And then it's going to summon three more demons to protect your Soul Juggler. And it's just going to keep triggering. And then your Soul Juggler is just going to destroy everything. And you're going to be winning the game. A lot of building warbands in Battlegrounds is getting those synergies from either minion type, or maybe you have Battle Cry or Death Rattle synergies, and then knowing when to swap synergies. Uh, really fun part of the game. A lot of the new custom minions were designed with that in mind. So Mama Bear here is really good with beasts. Mama Bear is a 5-5 five, five beast that whenever you summon a beast, it gains plus 5, plus 5. And it's a tavern tier 6 minion. You can see that we've replaced the mana cost with tavern tier for this mode. So let me show you, tell you about how that plays out with a card like Savannah High Main. When you play Savannah High Main uh, in the t recruit phase, it'll get that plus 5, plus 5. And it'll be 11-10. And when you enter combat, the Savannah High Main may die, and two hyenas will come out to see what's going on. And those hyenas will get plus five, plus five also from Mama Bear. So there'll be seven, seven hyenas. You kind of get the bonus twice. Really good synergy with cards like Savannah High Main. And you'll find other cards in Battlegrounds that have this kind of double synergies. Um, you want to make sure your Savannah High Main is on the left, so it's attacking first before Mama Bear attacks so that it does die and gets the benefit of the Mama Bear. You can drag minions around from left to right, so you can take advantage of that synergy. 
Okay, one more. Another tavern tier six minion, Kangor's Apprentice. It's super powerful. It has death rattle, summon the first two friendly mechs that die this combat. So there's so many crazy combos you can do with this card. And one of my favorites is with Sneed's Old Shredder. Sneed's Old Shredder is a mech, and when it dies, it summons a random legendary. So if you have a Sneed's Old Shredder die early in the combat, when your Kangor's Apprentice dies, it's going to resummon that Sneed's Old Shredder, and then you're going to get another random legendary, and it's just going to be crazy. Uh, it's even more powerful if you've got a golden Sneed's Old Shredder. Golden. Which means you've got three Sneed's Old Shredders, and they combine, and they have a new death rattle, which is it summons two legendary minions. So if your golden Sneed's Old Shredder dies early in the combat, and then Kangor's Apprentice dies, it's going to resummon the golden one. And you're going to end up getting two more legendaries. Just a reminder how goldens work. If you get three minions with the same name, they combine together, they give you a golden version. That golden version has double the attack, double the health, and double the text box. And then when you play it, it gives you a bonus card in your hand. That bonus card lets you discover a minion of a higher tavern tier. So they're quite important, fun part of the game. A couple more features that we added is we have a web card database. This is available right now, playhearthstone.com slash battlegrounds. You can look up all the minions to see what tavern tier they are. You can also look at all 24 of the heroes. The heroes are all unique to battlegrounds. And you can mouse over the minions to see what the golden versions of them are, and you can see the hero powers and so on. So that'll be a nice uh, way to get more information on battlegrounds while you're waiting for it to come out on Tuesday. Another feature we have is the web leaderboards. Um, these go live on Tuesday. They're just going to show the top 1,000 players in Battlegrounds based on their matchmaking rating. So play a lot, win a lot, get your rating up. Maybe watch your top players, see if your favorite one's in the top 1,000. Hopefully they are. Let me go over the release dates one time real quick before we finish up. The release date is November 5th for the closed beta. Um, to get access to the closed beta, if you've got a BlizzCon ticket or a virtual ticket, or if you pre-purchase Descent of Dragons, you'll be in the closed beta. One week later on November 12th is the open beta. Everybody can play for free at that point. Check it out. Thanks for coming and watching the uh, Descent of Dragons and Battlegrounds. Have a good BlizzCon. Thank you for attending Hearthstone, What's Next? Coming up, the cosplay exhibition will begin at 5.15.